Hello YouTube! This is Ross with Aquatic Oasis. It has been a minute since we've posted anything for you, and that we have to apologize for. 2019 has a story, and I'll tell it to you a little later. But for now, I just wanted to show you a little bit of an update of our saltwater reef tank. We have beautiful color, and just pinks and oranges, greens, and just all sorts of multicolored bits just growing everywhere and some beautiful uh, angels and oceanic cichlids okay yeah yeah well this isn't my reef tank <laughs> this is my daughter's uh, bedroom freshwater tank for her that she kind of takes care of well instead of showing you this let me show you our reef tank and a little bit of an update on this guy and here she is, our 210 gallon display tank. This one's located in our home and we've had it for years. We've been growing coral and propagating, treating it kind of like a grow out, and had a blast doing it all up until, well, last year, 2019. As I said earlier, 2019 has a story and it's, it's a really trying one. Took a lot of patience and a lot of soul searching to make sure that this is something I wanted to keep doing. And of course, as you could see by the video in front of you, I decided to keep going. And I am so glad I did because this tank has bounced back a hundredfold. Unfortunately, all those corals you see, almost every single last one of them is a newer colony from within the last eight months. Because just about everything before then is, well, all dogs go to heaven. I guess coral probably have their own place up there too. At least that's what I'm hoping for my old reef tank fish are all the original fish fish are champs healthy fat i mean just doing great look at them and right here i'm feeding them some of the food i make i make my own raw food that i freeze and and uh, they get a big chunk of it literally a chunk like the size of my palm every single day sometimes twice a day um lately i've been feeding a little bit more just to get the nutrient level in my water up because i'm running at about zero and when i say about zero i mean I mean, multiple test kits are, are reading zero, including the Hannah checker for phosphate. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing that just to get some more color, and it seems to be working. I have a Walt Disney frag and a home wrecker, um, which you can't really see in this picture. Actually, I don't think you can see them at all. They're just little frags, maybe about, you know, they're based out with multiple branches, but none of the branches exceed probably an inch and a half at the moment. But uh, starting to get the pinks and purples in that everyone likes to, to see, and eh, that makes me happy. I want to see that as well. I almost treat that as a sign of success with the Acropora. <laughs> if you're getting in the, the hot colors that are a little bit harder to achieve. But uh, some exciting and, well, new news for Aquatic Oasis. We now have started a Facebook business page where we plan to have auctions, sales, raffles, as well as other ways for you to participate in. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. We are really hoping everyone will follow us over on that page, like it, and uh, be engaged with the different activities that we put forward. Now, uh, I was talking about the story of our reefing experience of 2019 so end of 2018 i had two systems we had our display system that you're looking at and then we also had a frag system that we sold coral frags out of in our basement and it did really well for a long time and then I had a dosing pump fail through the night, and it continuously dosed two liters of bulk reef supply soda ash into the tank. So alkalinity, two liters of liquid alkalinity into the tank. And that morning I walked downstairs just to check on things as I do every morning, and well, I could smell the stench of dead coral in the air. I kid you not. That smell that's on your fingers after you've been fragging, that is what the air smelled like. Only a putrid vinegar version of it. And I knew immediately something bad had happened. <laughs> and my heart sank. So anyways, I go down there and the frag tank is just milky white. 
uh, both from the soda ash that had poured in and because of all the death. And when I say all the death, I mean any fish that were in the frag system were dead, snails were dead, crabs were dead. Every single piece of coral not only was dead, but had absolute zero flesh. So Acropora were bone white, just skeleton. Zoas completely melted off their frag plugs. Everything was just gone. Not even like dying in the course of one night it was just gone it was there was some of that slime on the frag bugs i guess but uh, so anyways this stimulated the thought process of getting away from dosing pumps and going to a reactor a calcium reactor as well as making me realize the need for being responsible for only a single system rather than running two separate systems with your own filtration and own dosing and all of that. I needed it simplified. So the thought was get a calcium reactor and move away from the dosing method and get them unified into one system, which we did. We drilled through the floor. We got it plumbed. We got it all hooked up. It's running great. We then moved forward with part two. However, I can be cheap, and I ended up getting a calcium reactor, a used one. I hooked it up, and it was going great. Everything, I was keeping my alkalinity and calcium levels on point. I was, geez, I was testing like four times a day because I was just kind of nervous. It was new for me to be running a reactor, not dosing. I've always done dosing. And, well, levels were great. About a week after setting up that calcium reactor, I started to have some RTN on Acropora, and then I started to have Zoas melting. Zoas that I have had for years, like the, from the colonies. I had a colony of uh, uh, vampire and drag that just all of a sudden closed up and started to spit slime i guess out of their mouths even they were closed but out of the very small opening they were starting to slime up of course you know the first thing i do is start testing and everything's testing great well another week goes and not only did i have more R uh, rtn what the, the the acros that had rtn from the previous week they all had died long story short over the course of a couple weeks i lost just about everything to this rtning event and it affected, well, and I say RTNing, but I mean it affected everything. Montipora, Euphilia, the Zoas, the Pallies. You know, I had a beautiful orange uh, fungia plate, and that, that, that thing toasted within, I don't know, I think I started to see it uh, dwindle, and within three hours, it had completely expelled its flesh away from its skeleton. Well, what do you do? An ICP test. There, there's something else. Maybe uh, copper in the water, poison in the water. Something's wrong. Um, I mean, I'm testing temperatures and everything. Well, I get my ICP test back, and everything looks normal except for one testing result, and that is for tin. Yeah, tin. Tin caused this. In fact, I had so much tin that it was unreadable by the ICP test. Hmm. Well, I started doing uh, research on what would be leaching tin. Of course, it's going to be rust or, or, or metal around the tank, things like that. It could be old power heads going out. I have MP40s, so I started checking wet sides for rust. I didn't see any rust. I then started checking all my heaters. I didn't see any rust on my heaters. I then replaced the hinges on my uh, my uh, display tank stand and canopy because you know any potential rust coming off the hinges any screws if there was any exposed screws around I was covering them in paint like acrylic black paint um, or actually I did acrylic black paint and then after it dried I then went over it with Vaseline <laughs> um, I do another ICP test within, I think it was two weeks or so. I still had a few corals alive. I mean, but let's say probably not quite half where we're dead at this point, um, which to me felt like the whole tank was dead. 
ICP test comes back and everything looks fairly normal. And there it is again. Tin. Unreadable amounts of tin in my water. And between the space of the first ICP test and the second, I had done, I don't know, probably 200 gallons worth of water changes through the course of that two weeks. And I know that sounds like it's crazy, but it's because things just kept doing worse and worse and alk and calcium levels were being maintained just about perfectly, you know, slight fluctuations, I'm sure, but. So then I start replacing stuff. I replaced heaters, I replaced wet sides, I replaced uh, pumps, everything, everything. So we're replacing everything. And we're talking a lot of money doing this. Um, about a month passes. And so I send out another ICP test. I'm doing the uh, the Triton ICP, and I get the test results back, and everything looks fairly normal, um, except for one, and you can guess it was tin. Tin was killing my tank, had killed my tank. So at this point, I was started recollecting, you know thoughts and memories and ideas and suspicions changes I had done to my tank and the only change that really stood out was that calcium reactor the calcium reactor so I replaced all the media got new media Did another ICP test, you know, water changes, all that. I used uh, Triton's uh, detox for metals. Apparently, it's mainly for uh, like silicates and, and, and copper, but I did it anyways because what other options do I have to get this tin out? ICP test comes back, tin is high. Pulling my hair out at this point. Not much is alive still. It didn't affect the fish, which is great. At least not that I'm aware of. All my fish survived at least through it. So there was one last pump that I hadn't replaced, and that was the pump in the calcium reactor. Well, I opened this calcium reactor up, pulled the pump out, and again, the calcium reactor was used. No rust that I can see in this pump. Right, no no rust whatsoever. But it was old looking. So what do I do? I, I replace that pump. And then I do another ICP test. Now, mind you, these ICP tests are like fifty bucks a piece. <laughs> and I'm like six of these in. Just in testing. And the tin is gone. It's down like to ten percent after doing this. So this entire time, this calcium reactor that I had hooked up was leaching tin into my system and killed 95% of all of my corals. Heartbreaking and ridiculous. Just nothing you would ever expect to see happen. However, the end of this terrible story has good news, and that is after essentially a year of repairing and replacing and redoing <laughs> a lot of the way I was doing this, we now have a display tank that has got some of the fastest growth I've ever seen. Some of these corals I've only had for a month and they've tripled in size. And I'm talking Acropora here and I'm talking high-end Acropora. Like I have a, a piece of Bill Murray that did nothing and I mean nothing 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 all of a sudden just exploding you know starting to plate out looking great um, that's one that I'm really happy with and glad to see that it's getting to the point to where I'll be fragging it soon um, and making those pieces available um, colors are probably some of the best colors I've ever had actually I think they are the best colors I've ever had we'll just keep it simple and say it that way and I guess this experience of mine 
can be extended out to those of you who are going to have hardships in the, the reefing hobby that you have acquired for yourself. You're going to have fish die. You're going to have coral die. Or you're going to have equipment, you know, break in the middle of the night. And then you're going to wake up to a disaster, you know. And you'll feel guilty and, and, and you'll want out. Or you'll decide it's not for you anymore. But I'll tell you what. I really, really was contemplating the whole selling the tank and getting rid of all of it and just you know i'm into archery i like to hunt and i really could put more time toward that i have a really nice bow and i wouldn't mind you know doing more in that hobby so perhaps this would free me up and those were some real thoughts i'll tell you but instead of that i decided no let's keep going you love this thing it's probably your strongest passion aside from your family let's let's see if we can now that we got it figured out let's see if we can just recoup and uh, start over essentially is what we did I did essentially uh, have a brand new tank after replacing all the equipment <laughs> trying to figure the tin out so that was kind of a perk I did uh, go back to dosing I just couldn't get that bad taste from the calcium reactor out of my mouth. And uh, I'm not just doing the two-part anymore with magnesium. I'm actually giving the Triton method a go. I've been running it for about six months, I'm going to say. I think it may, may be longer, but about six months. And so far, it's been great. My Ketomorpha is exploding in my refugium. And I mentioned earlier that I'm literally running at like zero nitrate and phosphate and intentionally feeding handfuls of food i do have like 50 plus fish in this tank so i'm sure tang police will come to arrest me at some point but as far as i can tell from their behavior and appearance they look great they eat a ton and i'm just gonna keep throwing food at them and hopefully that keeps the nutrition level in my tank up a little bit you know so we can continue to get great color out of these corals speaking of which possibly the best color i've had ever um, out of some of these pieces so as far as the triton method goes i'll put a video together as a review and a overview of uh, my experience in running triton and it does have some cons and uh, has some really good um, pros so i'll be honest in that review and that'll probably be our next video actually now uh, if you haven't subscribed please do so subscribe like this video and uh, if you can leave a comment very last thing there is on the right if you can go ahead and hit the uh, bell icon that will allow you to be notified every time we post a video and not just you know on occasion um, that way you don't miss anything and you uh, stay uh, following um, all of our information so uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you have any experiences with tin or odd metals or really just any uh, strange occurrences that may have crashed your tank or at least caused headache in your reefing hobby, go ahead and leave that story in, as a comment in the um, comments below, and I will definitely be checking those out. It uh, kind of is comforting to know that you know, you're not the only person this stuff happens to, and I am about the most anxious person now <laughs> when it comes to my tank i have uh my apex checking everything daily with the uh trident testing all of my levels you know uh all of the time uh, you know it tests four times a day but for about a month i was running it i think 24 times every hour i had a test uh which actually was a huge eye opener um as far as how i dose so um seeing the the hourly fluctuations between the three um you know magnesium calcium and alkalinity really changed the way that i have structured my dosing so that possible future video on that as well uh thank you so much for watching this video we really do appreciate it and uh please check out the facebook page and subscribe to our youtube channel enjoy your night and happy reefing from aquatic oasis